welcome back. We are now in part four. And we're studying on coattail hangers. You can't get there hanging on my coattails. So remember where we were left off? We were talking about, you know, out of the book of Numbers, the ten leaders that were told to go in and spy the land and all that they were told to do. And they came back. Ten leaders with uh, 10,000 at least under them. They said, we're not able. Uh, they're stronger than us. They're giants. We are grasshoppers in our sight and in their sight. And then I told you that there were uh, two leaders, Joshua the, and Caleb, that said, we are well able. Let us go at once. They're bred for us. Their protection is departed. But God is with us. And guess what the other ten and all that million put together of the of the children of Israel said? Uh, the answer was, uh, stone them. Ooh, can you believe that there's people that would want to stone you for doing the will of God? And out of t uh, 10 leaders, two were willing to do the will of God. But I want to go back real quick before I move on and give you a little uh, uh, lesson in perception. Remember when I said that they, uh, the 10 leaders said, we're not able, they're stronger than us. Uh, we saw giants and we were like grasshoppers. In our sight and in their sight. Listen to me, church. Listen to me. This is a great revelation. This is a lesson in perception. People will see you as you see yourself. Can I say that again? Say it with me. People will see me as I see myself. People will see me as I see myself. So you got to ask yourself, uh, do you see yourself as a grasshopper? No, you're a giant slayer. You're a David, you're a giant slayer. Well able to do everything that God has said to do. Let's move on again. Coattail hangers. That's those people that some want somebody else to do all their studying for them. No. You got to get into the word. You got to study and show yourself approved. You've got to study and show yourself approved. 2 Timothy 2.15 You've got to add to your faith, your faith virtue and knowledge and uh, self-control and perseverance and godliness and kindness and love. And uh, somebody else can't get you that. You've got to go after the things of God for yourself. That's in 2 Peter 1.5 Add to your faith. Add to your faith when you get to 2 Peter 1.10. It says, make your. See, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't talk about others. It keeps it in the, uh, you know, singular. It says, study to sow yourself approved. It said, add to your faith. Then it says in 2 Peter 1.10, make your calling uh, an election sure. Make your calling and your election sure you have to uh, down in, in jeremiah 12, chapter 12 verse 16 it says learn carefully my ways it's you learning the way of the lord learning the will of the lord learning the word of the lord uh he said in jeremiah 17 24 heed me carefully Zechariah says, diligently obey. It says in uh, 1 Timothy 5.10, diligently follow after uh, good works. It says in Hebrews 11.6, diligently seek me. Do you understand, church, that it's a personal relationship with a personal Savior that you have with Jesus Christ? Study to show yourself approved. Coattail hangers want somebody else to get everything that they can get for themselves. The same God that has given it to you will give it to them. Glory, 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 glory. Listen, it's about a personal savior. Can I talk to you about it? It's about a personal savior. It's about a personal relationship. This is what I'm trying to tell you. Listen to what it says in Philippians 2.12. You've got to get this down in your belly. It said work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Can I say it again? It's a personal savior. It's a personal relationship. And it says in Philippians. The apostle Paul knew it well. The Apostle Paul, he said, work out your own, your own salvation with fear 
and trembling. How about David? David, the man after God's own heart. David said in Psalm 35, Say to my soul, I am your salvation. Say to my soul, I, the Lord. He wanted the Lord to say to his soul, I am your salvation. He's a personal savior. Can I talk to you for that a minute? He's a personal savior. I, I'm giving you things that David wrote in Psalm 37, in Psalm 40, in Psalm 63. I'm going to read them to you. Uh, it, these are the things that David said. David said, I trust in, I dwell in, I feed on, I delight in, I rest in, I wait in, and I wait for Psalm 37. David said in Psalm 42, my soul pants. David said in Psalm 63, my soul thirst, my soul, soul longs, my soul follows, my soul faints for the courts of the Lord. He goes on to say in the Psalms, you know, about it being a personal relationship, a personal savior. Here's the words that David used in the Psalms. Can, can I read them to you? David used these kinds of terminologies. He said, my God, my rock, my strength, my fortress, my shield, my deliverer, my salvation, my stronghold, my portion, my redeemer. Wow. Wow. He said, my shepherd, my light, my refuge, my hiding place, my glory, my helper, my defense, my hope, my strong tower. It says in the Psalms that the name of the Lord is a strong tower that the righteous can run into and be saved, safe, safe, safe. Personal relationship. Can I tell you some of the things that David requested? Listen, these are all Psalms. David said things like this, show me. I love this. I, 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 I study these kinds of people because I want what they had. I want it for myself, what they had. Show me, teach me, forgive me, hide me, hear me, draw me, help me, enlighten me, restore me. That was, the, that was David. He looked to the Lord for everything he had need of. He said things like this, save me, deliver me, test me, visit me. Woo! Wow. Draw me. Draw me. It's a personal knowledge, church. It's a personal knowledge. It's a personal savior. It's a personal knowledge. It's a personal savior. It's a personal relationship. It's a personal, it's a personal uh, knowledge. It's a personal knowing. In Joshua, in Joshua, Joshua said this, I know that the living God is amongst us. It's a personal knowing. It's a personal knowing. You ought to write some of these down and every time you need them, you should just draw them up out of that well of, of salvation in you. Micah said, I know that the Lord will be good to me. Uh, Job said, uh, this I know, my Redeemer lives. David said, I'm going to give you a few of them with David. I love it. David said, I know that the Lord saves his anointed. David said, I know the Lord favors me. David said, I know God is for me. David said, I know that the Lord will maintain my cause right where you are right now. You are to decree and declare these things for yourself like David. Say with me that I know the Lord uh, saves his anointed. I know the Lord favors me. I know that God is for me. I know that the Lord will maintain my cause. I know, Isaiah said, I know that I shall not be ashamed. Oh my, wow. Paul in 2 Timothy chapter 1 said this, I know whom in whom I believe. Oh, throw your hands up right where you are and say, I like the apostle Paul. I like David. I like Job and Michael and Joshua. I know, I know whom I have believed because he's real in me, because he's revealed himself to me. Oh, God. Hallelujah. It's a personal walk, church. 
Can we tell tell you that again? It's a personal savior. He's you, you got to receive him for yourself. It's a personal relationship. It's a personal knowing. It's a personal knowing. But look, it's a personal walk. It's a personal walk. Acts 2.21. It's a personal walk. Whosoever, whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's a personal walk. Whosoever, quote that with me, Acts 2.21. Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you don't know him right where you are, call on him. Say, I need to receive you, Jesus, as my Savior, as my personal Savior, as my the one that, that, that I can have relationship with, the one that will dwell in me, that I can have your word. I can have, Lord, all that you offer, the everything that you say I am, the great I am. I can have it. You can have it right now, right now, right today. All you got to do is say, Jesus, I receive you into my life as my Lord and Savior and receive eternal salvation. My sins have been washed away. It's a personal walk. It's all about stewardship. I can't linger here for the sake of time, but it's all about stewardship. My charge to you today is be able to give an account to the Lord. Your stewardship or what he has put in your care. Because you got to ask yourself, what kind of steward am I? Because in the Bible, there's a story. And you can read it for yourself in chapter 16. You can read it for yourself. But there's going to come a time when you've got to give an account. The Lord going to ask an account. He going to, you know, want to know the account of your stewardship. What did you do with what I put in your hand? What did you do with the word? What did you do with your salvation? What did you do with the call? What did you do with what I gave you to do as a, a servant of God, as a child of God? Faithful, that's a wise servant. And the, un, and the other unfaithful servant, there was a parallel in the Bible. Let me give you the difference. A faithful servant had their waist girded, their lamps burning. They were waiting and watching and ready and doing and knowing the master's will. But the unfaithful, woo, uh, they wasted, the Bible says, uh, their master's goods. They wasted. Uh, they were money mongers. They were disloyal and dishonest. They had one foot in the kingdom and one foot in the world, you know, Straddling the fence. Wow, wow, wow. Remember the story. I can't get into it. But remember the story about uh, when he said to the unfaithful servant, Ooh, give, us, give an account of your stewardship. And he said, Oh God, listen to this. He said, You can no longer be my steward. You can no longer be my steward can no longer be my story. Remember the rich young ruler? You know, what else do I lack? Go and sell everything that you have. Come follow me. He couldn't let go of things. Give an account of your stewardship. Let's move on. Let's move on. It's got to be likened to a sure foundation. Coattail hangers, they, they, they don't know what it is to have their own foundation. They... He, you got to be founded on the rock. I know you know this. I know that you understand this. That's in the book of Luke chapter 6 and in the book of Matthew chapter 7. You know, you got to be founded on the rock. The other one was founded on the sand. The Bible says that when you're on the rock, when you got a sure foundation, it doesn't matter if the rain descends and the floods come and the wind blows and beat against your house. It will not fall. But when you're built on the sand, you have no foundation, no personal relationship. You, you, you don't, you, all, you want somebody else to do all your praying and all your praising and all your st studying. It says that when the rains descended and the floods came and the wind blew, what happened? The Bible said it fell and great was the fall of it. Oh, I can only tell you today, be built on the solid foundation, the rock of Jesus Christ stewardship the apostle paul said we have been entrusted we have been entrusted with a trust 
Here's what Paul said. I have been entrusted with a stewardship. You have been entrusted with a stewardship. Uh, Paul said, we have been approved by God to be entrusted. He said in, in 1 Timothy 6, guard what has been committed to your trust. God, God, I don't know the right word to, to say, but God looks at the faithfulness of what you do with what he's given you. What you do with it. He's not looking for somebody to, to, to waste it. He's not looking for people that are straddling the fence. He's looking for people that want a sure foundation. He's looking for people that want to be faithful. He's looking for people that when he says, give an account of your stewardship, that he'll say, well done, thy good and faithful servant, enter in. The Apostle Paul said, you've been entrusted with, talk. what have you been, you've been entrusted with a stewardship. You've been trusted with a stewardship. You've been entrusted with the gospel. This gospel right here, we've been entrusted with it. That we know how to rightly divide the word. That we make sure that we have studied and shown ourselves approved. So that we can teach others and impart the word of truth into them. Coattail hangers want somebody else to do it. They don't want the work. They don't want the study. They don't want any of that. The Apostle Paul said, you've been entrusted with a stewardship. It goes on in the books that he wrote, Romans. You've been entrusted with the oracles, the revelation of the word of God. You've been entrusted with the word of reconciliation. You've been entrusted with the preaching of his word. You've been entrusted with the manifold wisdom of God. And there's going to come a time where he's going to ask you, like he did that parable of the faithful and unfaithful servant. And it's in the book of Luke chapter 12. Listen, listen, listen. Verse 48. Here's what he says. Give an account of your stewardship. You can't give an account of mine. You can't give an account of anybody else's. You can only give an account of yours. He said, give an account of your stewardship. And then he goes on to say, to whom much that unto whom much has been given much is required see that's why there's coattail hangers they don't want much to be given to them because they don't want much to be required of them they want somebody else to do all the work all the praying all the praising all the studying all the things that i've just shared with you uh but you want to hear this you want to hear this it comes out of the book of matthew 25 21 He's going to ask, give an account of your stewardship. He's going to say to whom much has been given, much is required. And then he's going to look at you right in your eye. He's going to look at you and he's going to say, well done. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Because you have been faithful over much. And now I can make you a ruler. You have been faithful, excuse me, over few, little. Now I can make you a ruler over much. Faithful over little. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Whatever I gave you to do, whatever you laid your hand to do, whatever, whatever you set your hand to the plow, you didn't turn back. He said, well done, good and faithful servant. Faithful over few, faithful over little. Now I will make you a ruler over much. The bottom line, as we're winding down, the bottom line is cost. Somebody shout cost. 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 I tell people, what's the difference between price and cost? I heard the Lord just say this. Price and cost. Price. Price. And cost. Price is what the price tag is set on. If you go to a store and you want to buy that dress that's on that, that, that rack, it may say that the price is whatever. Cost is how much you're willing to pay. <laughs> See, I've, I've, I've made up my mind, Lord, that I'll pay the price for your anointing. I'll pay the price for the call of God on my life. I'll pay the price to have the power of God, you know, um, in, in my life that, that, that to, to, to minister to people and see the sick healed. Hallelujah. Oh, if we only knew church. You got to want it. You got to want it bad. The bottom line is cost. This is a powerful scripture. If you ever get a chance to read it, do it. I'm going to linger here for a minute. First 
Chronicles 21, verses 21 through 26. Get this down. Get this down. David came to Ornan and he wanted to buy the threshing floor. Listen to me. He came to Ornan and he wanted to buy the fleshing, the threshing floor. And Ornan said to him, no, 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 take it. He said, I'm going to also give you the oxen for the offering. And I'm going to give you the threshing implements for the wood. And I'm going to give you the wheat. For the grain offering. And David said no, 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 no. David said I will pay a full price. I will pay the full price. Here's what David said. I cannot take what is yours. That's what this whole teaching is about. Coattail hangers. He said I cannot take what is yours. And give it to the Lord. He said I cannot offer God. That which has cost me nothing. Oh, I want to shout, jump, and run around the room. That's got to be the testimony that you carry on the inside of you. That I'm not a coattail hanger. I'm the one that says, here I am. If you can use anybody, you can use me. You're the one that says when somebody wants to give you like that. Uh, you know, he wanted to buy the threshing floor. You, I don't have time to go into what a threshing floor is. But Ornan said, no, take it, take it. And I'll give you, you know, everything that you need for the offering. And I'll give you everything you need for the wood. And I'll give you everything for the grain offering. And David said, no, 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 no. I cannot give unto God that which is yours. I cannot give unto God that which has cost me nothing. He said, I'll pay the full price. I just heard the Lord say, tell somebody out there, I don't know who you are, but you'll never find the anointing of God. You'll never find the anointing of God. You'll never find the things of God on the basement bargain rack. It'll never be half price. It'll never be marked down. There's a full price to pay for the anointing of God and the call of God. And you got to throw your hands up just like David and said, I will pay the full price. It's a costly anointing. It'll cost you everything. I've had to lay down jobs. I, you could go on and on what the Lord may require of you just to see what your obedience level is when you can lay it down not even knowing what you'll do, where the income will come, whatever it is. Whew. It's a costly anointing, church. The bottom line is cost. As I close out with this and then give you a quick reminder. What is the problem with coattail hangers? What is the problem with coattail hangers? Let me tell you. They want the gold without the fire. They want the purity without the fuller soap. They want the pulpit without the study. Ooh. They want the substance without the faith. They want the prize without the race. They want the stewardship with no test. They want the glory with no suffering. They want the pleasures with no pain. They want the lead, but they don't want to follow. They want the anointing, but they don't want to pay for it. There's a full price to pay. Ooh. There's a full price to pay. Can I say it again? Coattail hangers, they don't want to pay the price. They want you to do it all. Coattail hangers want the gold without the fire. I just heard the Lord remind me of a scripture. I believe it's in Isaiah. He said, out of the furnace of much affliction, it'll make somebody weep. Out of the furnace of much affliction, I have chosen you. Out of the furnace of much affliction, I have chosen you. Because you were willing to pay the price. Willing to pay the price. No sacrifice too great. No requirement too great. You're in it for the long haul. You're in it not for people to carry your briefcase. Not for all the things that some people do. You're in it because you delight to do His will. You want coattail hangers want the gold without the fire, the purity without the fuller soap, the pulpit without the study. You can't get up and try to give somebody something that you don't have. If you don't study, how can you impart into another? 
You can't give somebody what you don't have. They want the substance without the faith. They want the prize without the race. They want the stewardship, but they don't want a test. But I can only tell you, as we just read it, there will be a give and account of your stewardship. And you don't want to hear you unfaithful servant cast out into darkness and everything that you have taken. You want to hear the Lord say, well done, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Again, they want the pleasures without the pain. Coattail hangers can't get there hanging on my coattails. They want the pleasures without the pain. They want the lead without the follow. Mm -mm -mm. They want the anointing without the cost. I love to teach series because I love to get the word into people. And I did a, a series about discipleship. And, and uh, I, I, I taught on... Uh, what is he looking for? And then the second part was it's a costly discipleship. You're finding out. Yeah, it's a costly discipleship, church. What a God. He tells us in the book of Revelation, and I, I won't linger here, but he says, I'll put it in my term. What does the Lord, you know, what would the Lord how would the Lord view coattail hangers? People that don't want any of the work, any of the study, any of the, any of the anything, any of the obedience, anything. Uh, they just want the benefits, the glory. He talks in Revelation 3, verses 14 through 22. He talks about the Laodicean church. And look what he says. You're neither hot nor cold. He said you're lukewarm. You're neither hot nor cold. You're lukewarm. Then this is what he said. Listen, he said, you say of yourself you're rich. Or really you're poor. You say you have become wealthy. But really you're in spiritual poverty. You say you have need of nothing, but yet you're in need of everything. And the Lord says, you're wretched, you're miserable, you're poor, you're blind, and you're naked. And then he says, come buy of me gold, tried in the fire that you may be rich. Coattail hangers haven't been uh, tried by fire coattail hangers or lukewarm. So my charge to you today is wherever you are, however much you know, wherever you go a little further. One time I'll bring you a message called go a little further. Go a little further. Jesus could have went to the garden and stopped there. But the Bible said he went through and you know what took place in the garden of Gethsemane. He could have turned, but he went. The requirements who knows what the requirement but will be, but no matter what it is, I, I charge you today to go a little further. I charge you today to be an example that somebody could follow. I charge us today, go through those things that I mentioned and, and, and see what, you know, read for yourself about the uh, oil in the lamps. You know, theirs ran out because they didn't bring any. Don't let your oil run out. Don't have to ask somebody else for your oil. Have enough for yourself. Give us some of your oil. What happened? They said, no. No. Go buy for yourself. What did I tell you the problem with coattail hangers are? They want somebody else to do all the whatever. All the work. But they want to reap what? The benefits and the blessings. They want their coattail hangers. Coattail hangers. What all do they want? They want somebody else to fight all the battles. Be a Deborah. Be be a be a, 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 a David. Be willing to fight every giant that comes your way. Uh, you know, do, do it. Don't say, I will if you will. Say, I will surely go, whoever you are. 
coattail hangers. They want somebody else to get the breakthroughs, remember? Be willing to wrestle that angel all night long so that you can have uh, and be able to... The Bible says that he that angel wrestled... Uh, uh, that Jacob wrestled that angel all night long and the Bible said, and he prevailed. <laughs> and, and the Bible said he got a name change. Uh, his name was called Penel. That means I saw God face to face. Wow, 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 wow. They want somebody else to do all the praying. No, you got to have your own prayer life. You got to have your own prayer life. They want somebody else to do all the praise. There's something about how many of you right there watching me know right now that uh, that when you when you when you're in your prayer closet, you know that your prayer reached the Lord and He comes. You know when you get your praise on, when you're in your in your prayer uh, praise closet, when you're running through your house, when you're in your car singing. Sometimes I know I just heard the Lord say it's happened to me. Somebody else they've been driving down the road and a praise hit them, and they got the praise in so much that they weren't even able to drive. They have to pull over the side of the road get that praise out. <laughs> I got a praise and I got to get it out. I got a praise and I got to get it out. Somebody can't give God your praise. It is your praise that will bring his presence right to where you are. Get that yet praise. Get that yet praise. Coattail hangers. They want somebody else to get all those promises and possessions for you. You don't want to be the ones that say we're not able. You want to be the one that rises up and says we are well able to take the land. Because what? Why? Because God is with us. Their protection is departed, but God is with us. Uh, they going to be bread for us. Remember, you can't look at yourself as a grasshopper. Other people will see you as you see yourself. you got to declare that I'm a giant slayer like David, not afraid of anything. Now, you might get people want to stone you for your stand, but, but uh, <laughs> hey, God is on your side. God is on your side. Coattail hangers want somebody else. Remember to do all that studying. But the Bible that we read said, study to show yourself approved. Right, rightly dividing the word of truth. And just remember that it's a personal savior, a personal relationship. We read all that. It's a personal knowing. You got to know that you know that you know my Redeemer lives. You got to know that he favors you. You got to know that he's for you. You got to know that he will maintain your calls. Understand about stewardship. Understand what has been entrusted to you. The gospel. The oracles of God. The word of God. And the word of reconciliation. The manifold wisdom of God. Wow. And remember what I said about cost. 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 Somebody can't give you the anointing. And I told you, it's never on sale. You'll pay a full price. You'll pay a full price. Priced and cost. Price is what something will call, is price tagged at. Cost is what you're willing to pay. I love you much. I hope you enjoyed this, this uh, coattail hangers uh, teaching. In Jesus' name, I'll be back to you next month. God bless you.